but we're going to talk about polyatomic ions. Woo! <laughs> that's, the, that's the spirit. <laughs> oh, no. um, why are we talking about polyatomic ions? It was your idea, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, I think the way polyatomic ions are have been introduced to me before in other chemistry classes, other courses, is there's usually a one huge list on a PowerPoint with sometimes 20 or more of these polyatomic ions. And instructors usually tell me to remind, remind certain ones or to try and learn all of them. And every name, every charge, just all the intricacies to it. And so perhaps I thought we could maybe condense that in a more approachable and more digestible way than okay. that. Okay. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you on that one. All right. So now I know what the goal is. So can you see this all right? Yes. Okay. So let's start by saying uh, polyatomic ions are ions, so they have a charge, and they have more than one atom. And I don't know which ones jump out to me right off the bat, but I want to do nitrate. NO3 minus um, is nitrate. And right now, we're not going to worry about why it's NO3 or how the oxygens are bonded to the nitrogen at all. All that we really need to worry about at this point is that those four atoms, one nitrogen, three oxygens, will bond in a way uh, through some sharing of electrons such that they have a minus one charge. And that's one that's gonna come back over and over and over again. Um, and so it's probably a polyatomic ion that is worth memorizing, committing to memory, using enough and so, until you know it. Was that on your list? Yes, nitrate was definitely on my list. Okay, and although it's impossible, I think, in a large class to hear the difference when I say it, there's another one that's nitrite. So I don't know if you can hear the difference when I say nitrate and nitrite, but they're two different ones. And uh, nitrite, oops, is NO2 with a minus charge. Um, fortunately, these two, they both have nitrogen and they've got the name and, and, and their, their root name is nit <laughs> nitrogen. How am I doing? Makes sense so far. Okay, I'll let you pick a couple. All right, um, I think if you're going into Chem 141, I think one that pops up a lot often there, and it shows up a little bit here is phosphate. Okay. PO4 with a three minus charge, I believe. Yep, three minus. Phosphate. And this one is, also pretty unique for this course too, because this is one of the few polyatomic ions with a charge greater than one or two. Right, right, that's a good point. It comes up over and over again, yeah. And uh, if we're gonna do phosphate, maybe we should do phosphite as well. Oh, I've written it wrong. PO, PO3, two minus, I'm gonna write it again. PO3 2 minus. Let's scratch this one out. You can't see it anymore. Pretend that's not there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to come back again. We've got four very quickly. Are we going to end up with 20 like you promised we wouldn't? Um, I hope not. I hope I not. Think <laughs> Okay, uh, I think if we're gonna do those three, then we also have to do, or those four, then we have to do sulfate as well. 
Fair enough. Yeah, sulfate is one that shows up a lot yeah. too. Yeah. Um, then we've got to do sulfite too, right? Yes, we do. Can I stop us just there for a second? Yeah, of course. This is something that I have never been any good at in terms of knowing the names of these polyatomic ions, but it's jumping out at me right now. We've gone from nitrate to nitrite, and we've lost an oxygen. We've gone from phosphate to phosphite, and we've gone from four oxygens to three oxygens. We've gone from sulfate to sulfite, and we've gone from four oxygens to three oxygens. Maybe that will help. Maybe that will help somebody. I don't know. Yeah, but it's a good naming pattern. Yeah, that, that, that pattern jumped out at me as we're doing that one. Okay, we've got six. How many more are we allowed? Less than 20, maybe 10, yeah, <laughs> 10 so or 15. We, okay, so um, do, you want, do you have another one on your list? Um, I was thinking about carbonate, and okay, I remember enough. correctly, is that CO3 2 minus? Yeah. yeah. What about uh, permanganate? Is that one of yours? Um, I think it can be one. It, it isn't super relevant, but I think since it has a permanganate, it's a little okay. different in the naming so far. So MnO4 with a single minus charge, permanganate. Manganate, manganate. I gotta work hard on the spelling here. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Oh, you know what? If we're going to do carbonate, we should do hydrogen carbonate. So, and I'm going to add, so I'm going to add two more on here. Um, OH for hydroxide. And just to throw everybody for a loop on this one, I want to add NH4 plus ammonium. You think that would get us most of the places we need to be? Acetate just jumped into my head. I don't know if we I know, should it's add on my list. I just said acetate to then. This is how we end up with these really this because everybody thinks everything is so important. We can't leave that off the list. It's too important. <laughs> so we've got 12 now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Just think of them one for each month, I guess. Yeah. So what, what, so these are, these are, Re very common polyatomic ions. Um, I don't know if you have to memorize any of them. What you do have to do is use them enough that you begin to know what they are pretty quickly. If you're spending all of your time flipping through a book or Googling to try to figure out what hydrogen carbonate is, you're losing valuable time that you could be doing something else. If on an exam we've got uh, some of these compact, some of these polyatomic names, uh, polyatom polyatomic ions are used as part of compound names, and you're struggling to figure out which one is which. You're losing valuable time. So these ones, it really wouldn't hurt if they were memorized, if they were better than that, used a lot, so that um, they really just kind of exist at the forefront of people's uh, minds while they're worrying about chemistry. Yeah, certainly. And uh, yeah, um, there's also some of these you'll just use so often and you won't have to put in any 
outside effort into memorizing because you see them so often. Like hydroxide is very common for bases. Um, and nitrate shows up a lot. So just knowing, recognizing them, or recognizing that there is a polyatomic ion in a, in a compound is already one step ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah, it's actually, that's a, a very good point that none of these, none of these, hold on, let me bring it up again. None of these polyatomic ions end, ID, end with IDE. And so if you see a compound that has ITE or ATE in the end of it, at the end of it, well, I'll take that back. Here's one that I like, <laughs> <laughs> except for hydroxide, apparently. Um, almost none of them. Um, are, so if you see something that is not ending with IDE, it should give you a hint that um, there's a polyatomic ion in there. And if you, you better recognize it, you better figure out what it is. Probably in the next, if you're reading it, you probably need to figure it out in the next five seconds. Probably about your deadline time. If you're sipping in more than that, you're in trouble. And hydroxide, hopefully you'll recognize that um, hydrogen and oxygen are in hydroxide, and there's no element on the periodic table called hydroxide or hydro <laughs> hydroxide or whatever, whatever it would have to be for this to be a, a, a single element. Yeah, I think this is going to be a lot more easy to understand or be more approachable for our students now. Okay, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I mean, uh, yeah, I uh, I use these ones pretty often, but I'm a chemistry professor, right? Yeah. You use you use them reasonably off reasonably often. You're a chemistry major, right? If you're a you're a biology major, you're going to want to know about some sulfates and the and the phosphates or the uh, um, in DNA pairs and all those sorts of things, right? There's a it's all it, you're going to use them a lot. What else should we say, Kevin? Um, and even though this is a good list, um, don't you don't have to necessarily think about these as static items on a list you have to memorize. There's a lot of good chemistry when it comes to polyatomic ions. Whether you understand it at this point or not, there's a lot of resonance structures. There's a lot of Lewis structures. There's a lot of good general chemistry in these. So you can use them to practice as well. Okay, cool. Thanks, thanks. All right, Kevin, well, thanks for uh, leading me through polyatomic ions and uh, I'll talk to you again next time. Yep, talk to you ne next time, Dr. Hunter. Have a good one.